You're listening to the Pro Organizer Studio podcast with Melissa Klug and Jen Obermeyer. Thank you so much for joining in. Our mission is to broaden the horizons of savvy business women in the organizing industry by instilling confidence and inspiring authenticity. You'll gain new insight into strategies designed specifically for professional organizers. So now let's get started. Hey, Pro Organizers, it's Melissa, and I am back with another episode. I'm actually so excited to talk about the subject. It's something that I have been meaning to talk about for a while, but we just had so much other content, and I'm just really excited to get into the subject today. Um, Before we start, I just want to remind everyone that our Organizing Essentials course is open for enrollment. So you can go to the show notes, or you can go to ProOrganizerStudio.com and click Courses and find out all about organizing essentials. This is a course that came straight from my heart. It is all about organizing in clients' homes. So everything from how do you deal with a difficult client to how do you deal with a client that has boxes from floor to ceiling? How do I do paperwork? How do I do a kitchen? All of that. We talk about client psychology. We talk about so many things. The bonus is that we have a Zoom once a month. It's actually one of my favorite things to do in my whole business. It is the loveliest group of women we get together and talk about client stuff. So if you have a client problem that you're dealing with, or you're like, I don't really know what kind of products to use, all of these things are things we cover in Organizing Essentials. Also, there's a bonus. We will be doing a live Zoom for anyone that joins us in the month of March, just for those people. So get a little private Zoom with me. Please hit our show notes or head to ProOrganizerStudio.com and click courses. It is $249, and I promise it'll be some of the best money that you spend all year in your business. Fully deductible. Tax time is coming up. Enrollment is going to be closing soon. Get in while you can. Can't wait to meet you guys and get started. Okay, so today we are talking about something that is all over the news. It is like absolutely everywhere. And what I'm about to say is is going to sound kind of ironic when I really think about it. But I read an article once that was about information overload, which by the way, is very real. My brain like hurts every day (laughs) with the amount of information that I have to take in. And I'm sure that you feel the same way. So it said the amount of information that we get in one day of our modern life is equivalent to the amount of information people in the late 1800s got in their entire lifetime. Okay, so here's the ironic part of this. I went to go try to find that article so that I could quote it directly for you, but I couldn't find it, which means there's information overload in my brain and maybe on the internet too. But I did find something different. And one of the things I was able to find was from Fast Company. And it was a statistic that said the information that we get in a day now compared to 1986 is equivalent to 174 newspapers worth of information. So I understand it's probably been a while since a lot of us have read a newspaper cover to cover, but think about 174 newspapers stacked up, and that is the difference in the amount of information we are having to process or that we are given every single day. This is all just like a completely insane statistic to me. But when my brain feels exhausted by all the inputs coming at me every day, I completely believe it. This is not just in our personal lives, but it is for sure, especially in our businesses. And one of the things that I see in the amazing women that I coach in Pro Organizer Studio programs is there are so many pieces of technology that are fighting for our attention and our brain space in our businesses. And it's really close to impossible to keep it all together. I mean, like part of my job is to know about a lot of these things. And I will tell you, it's totally overwhelming to know about all of the different pieces of technology that exist that can help our business. And I think that sometimes we can just get overloaded and be like, whoop, my brain is shut down and and I can't deal with it. I also understand that there are things that you you sometimes don't want to admit that you don't understand. This is a thing. It happens to me. The other day, someone asked me if I had heard of this XYZ something. And I'm like, duh, of course I have, because I knew that I was like supposed to know what it was. And honestly, I didn't know enough about it to to be remotely, (laughs) to to give a remote answer on it. But I didn't want to look stupid. So I had to Google it. I had to figure out what it was. And and that is definitely one of those things that I know we all struggle with is you don't want to look like, oh, you don't know about the XYZ thing. So 
one of the things that I am committed to doing here is trying to break down some of these things that suddenly seem to be everywhere or things that have been around a while, but you might not actually know what they do or more importantly, why you might need them in your business. And I want you to be able to say, yeah, I've heard of that and like not have it be a lie. (laughs) Oh yeah, I definitely know what that is. So today's version of what the heck is this thing is going to be something that is the hottest new thing around. Everyone is talking about it. It is all over the news. And it's something that can really feel, I think, super overwhelming, super techie. And I know that some people really don't love tech or they think they're not techie and and tech things might overwhelm them or start to feel very scary. But this thing that we're going to be talking about today has huge opportunities for organizers. And I want to talk about it. So If you have heard people talking about chat GPT, there are reels, there are TikToks, there are news stories. It's like a really, really huge thing. If you've heard about chat GPT, but you're like, I have no idea what it is. That's what we're going to talk about today. We're actually going to talk about a bigger subject, but chat GPT is this new technology and it has experienced insane growth. So I'm a business data nerd. Okay. So just just go with me for a second. Um, It took Instagram two and a half years after it started to get to 100 million users on their platform. It took ChatGPT two months to get to that same level. So this is something that came out and just absolutely exploded. And you may have heard about it, but you might be sitting here going like, I've definitely heard of it, but I have no idea what it is. By the way, total side note that you didn't ask for it. This is how I feel anytime I read an article about Bitcoin. I have tried really hard to understand Bitcoin. I don't understand it. I'm never going to understand it. I refuse to understand it. So it might just be that chat GPT is your version of Bitcoin, right? Where you just go like, yep, I've heard of it, but I have no idea what it is. Chat GPT is just one of many different options that you have for starting into the world of AI. And the other day, someone posted in our group for Inspired Organizer members, and they were like, oh my gosh, have you guys tried the Canva tool using AI? And someone responded, what is AI? That is a very common response. It's actually why I'm doing this podcast today. So AI stands for Artificial Intelligence. And in its very simplest form, what AI is, is using computer learning to generate something that would have normally been generated by you and your brain. And because computers can work infinitely faster than we can, our brains are amazing, but they can only process at a certain speed. And because computers can take a ton of information and put it together and synthesize it in milliseconds, it can basically generate a lot of data and content and information in a very short period of time. While ChatGPT is getting the most attention recently for how it brought AI kind of into the public consciousness, there are other things beyond ChatGPT that are using AI that we have access to. Okay, so for a while, AI has been around for a while, but it's really only been able to be used by computer scientists and other people. Now it's coming to actual consumers like you and me. So there is something called Jasper that has been around for a while. And then there's a new tool in Canva that is called Magic Write that uses AI. This is a total side rant. I will argue to anyone on the earth that the best $12.95 I spend on my business every month is being a Canva Pro member. I cannot possibly encourage all organizers to get on Canva Pro. It is the best thing for your business. But inside Canva, they have this new tool called Magic Write. Okay, so I'm going to start by talking about what they do and how to do it. And then I'm going to move on to how I recommend you start using it in your business. So just stick with me. ChatGPT, Jasper, Magic Write. Use artificial intelligence to take something that you give it as a prompt And all that a prompt is, is just a set of instructions of what you want it to do. It's basically the direction that you're giving it. And then magically, and and I'm just going to say magic. I know it's not magic. It's very smart computer scientists who are writing code and like something I don't even, I will never understand how it gets put together. But it takes that prompt that you give it, those instructions, and then it uses all of the knowledge of the internet to give you a result of the instructions that you gave it. An example. I just wrote a prompt in Canva's Magic Write tool that says, write a blog post on the top 10 tips for decluttering. In less than five seconds, and yes, I timed it, it spit out a list of decluttering tips with details. So an example that I particularly liked was be ruthless. Be honest with yourself about what you really need and use. If you haven't used an item in over a year, it's probably time to say goodbye. That was one of the tips that it spit out. 
I did another simple prompt then. Write a 500 word blog post about the benefits of decluttering with children and toys. In six seconds, it spit out some really good content, 10 tips, including one that I actually use all the time with parents in my organizing work. It was decluttering promotes creativity. With fewer toys to choose from, children are forced to be more creative with what they have. This can lead to imaginative play and foster creativity. Those are just a couple examples of using really simple prompts. I think that the magic of AI gets more magical when you give it very specific and detailed information in the prompt. And by the way, these prompts can be very long. Like you could write a whole paragraph as a prompt. So the more detail you are able to add to your prompt and the more specific you can get, typically the better the information that comes back from the prompt. So I wrote... Write an article in a witty, entertaining tone about why you don't need to keep buying things to fill your house with clutter. Make it 500 words. The content that it generated hit the mark for me. Here is a little bit of what it says. And by the way, I'm going to post in the show notes. I'm going to actually give you the link that you can go to the outputs so you can read the whole thing. You can read the prompt that I put and then read what the output is just so you can see what it looks like. From that prompt, it said, are you tired of living in a cluttered house? Do you find yourself constantly buying things just to fill up space? Well, my friend, it's time to put down the credit card and step away from the shopping cart. Let's be real. We've all been guilty of buying things we don't need. That cute throw pillar that you just had to have, even though you already have 10 at home. Or that new kitchen gadget that promised to make cooking easier, but has been sitting in the back of your drawer collecting dust. But here's the thing. Buying more stuff isn't going to solve your clutter problem. So that's just a few sentences that it spit out using that prompt I gave it was give me a witty, entertaining tone. I like what it spit out. I think it's pretty great. I want you to go to the show notes and check out the document just so you can read the whole thing. You can read the prompts and read what it spit out. But now that you have like a really brief idea of what it can do and what you put in and then what it puts out, I want to talk about how I recommend that you use this for your business, because it's not just that this tool exists, but how am I supposed to use it? Melissa, please tell me, like, what am I exactly supposed to do with this? So the last few podcast episodes, we have been talking about how social media is not the way that you are going to build your business if you are doing in-home local organizing. We've talked about how social media isn't it, but then we talked about what should I be doing? So if you listened to the second part of the podcast with Kate the Socialite from the Socialite Vault, she was talking about what you do need to grow your business. She recommended a lot of great things, but one of the first things was you obviously need to have a solid website, really great website. And then for SEO purposes, adding a blog to that website is a really, really solid idea. Whenever I say the word blog to anyone, I mean, I shouldn't say anyone, but most people, 98% of the organizers I work with, when I'm like, hey, have you thought about a blog? I get, I get a few things. I sometimes get silence. I sometimes get, what I mostly get is, oh, that just sounds overwhelming. I'm not a writer. I'm not a blogger. I don't know what I would say. There's just this kind of an immediate block. You know, writing is not my strong suit. I really hate it. I cannot imagine putting together a blog because it takes me forever to just write a social media caption. There are just a lot of things that, a lot of mind blocks people have around blogging in general. Okay. And sometimes people are like, it would take me so long to write 500 words. I I don't even know how it it would take me hours. I I just don't know how I would do it. And I would like to be clear. I really do understand this. So I do like to write. I I very much like writing. And I still find myself in front of a blank computer screen sometime going, I don't, I have got nothing. (laughs) I've got no ideas. I've got nothing. So I, I really get it. To me, these AI tools are an amazing way to use a gift that has been given to us from the computer scientists of the world to be able to get over that hump of writing something versus staring at a blank screen. So it's a great way to get over writer's block or I'm not a writer. And what I recommend to people is that you use the prompt and then whatever AI delivers on that prompt as a foundation for your work. Here's what I mean. If you wanted to, you can easily, I gave you a couple examples earlier, but you could easily go into ChatGPT or Magic Write and just say, write a 300 word blog about the benefits of decluttering. In five seconds, you would have the content, you would hit copy and paste, you'd add a couple photos, and you would have a blog up in less than two minutes probably. You can absolutely do that if you want to. There's nothing wrong with that. 
I don't personally advocate just cutting and pasting and using whatever the computer spits out. What I suggest to people is that you look at the output and you see that you have been given an empty house and now it's time to decorate it. You didn't have to pour the concrete, you didn't have to put up the walls, you didn't have to put up drywall, but you have been given an empty house and now your job is to put pictures on that wall and to fill it with cool furniture. So I personally believe that writing of any kind is really only as good as the personality that it's able to convey, you know, whether it's your website, whether it's a blog, whether it's a social post, it's whatever your unique personality is. I just want it to be you, whatever you are authentically. But I don't want it to sound mechanical or like a computer generated it, which sometimes AI tools can sound. Example, if we want to talk about 10 decluttering tips for the kitchen as a blog post, AI is probably going to spit out something about organizing your drinking cups. So what I might do from that is say, oh, I want to expand on this. What I want to talk about is downsizing coffee mugs. And the reason I want to talk about that is because my personal decluttering journey is we had 47 coffee mugs jammed into one small cabinet, but only two people in the house that ever drank hot beverages out of them. So we had like what felt like hundreds of coffee mugs, but we would basically only use like two to three a day. So I could take that as as the canvas and say, I'm going to add the decor I'm going to tell this story about coffee mugs and tell people that I relate to this. And here's what I did with my coffee mugs. Here's how I repurpose them, blah, blah, blah. I can give them the whole thing about the coffee mugs, right? So I have taken something out of AI and then I have put my own personal spin on it. You might look at that and say, oh, okay, so I'm going to use this as a thought starter. But you know what? I don't love these tips. I'm actually going to remind people about this totally crazy kitchen organization project I did and how, you know, we used a cabinet for something totally different than it's ever been used for before, whatever. You can see AI as the tool to get you started. It gives you ideas that then you can build from. What AI is going to give you is a way to shortcut the extra hard work that you might have to do. But I think even more importantly, what it is to me more than anything else is, is AI going to help me do something that otherwise, like a blog, I would massively procrastinate on or never start at all? I'm going to use that as a tool then. I see so many people who never start the blog or they never they never write the newsletter or they never do the thing because they don't know how to get started and they don't know what to write. And then they miss out on all the other benefits, whether it's SEO for your website, whether it's connecting with people who have signed up for your newsletter, and it's it's because of fear or it's because of that blank page, okay? So to me, AI allows you to take that blank page out of it and allows you to get started on something that otherwise you might just go, nope, I can't do it. So there's a way for you to be a writer without having to spend hours and hours just staring. Here's the other thing that I want to say, because we all know we're all organizers. We're all in the same boat, ladies. When we're talking about a blog or we're talking about anything that you want to do to generate interest for your business, you know, we tend to overthink it and we tend to be perfectionistic. None of this has to be perfect. I know we want things to be that way, but what I want is for you to be able to launch the blog or send the newsletter or do the thing without it being perfect. And if you are staring at a blank screen and can't get there, if AI can help you get over that hump and it takes a little bit of that perfectionism off the table, it takes the overthinking off the table, I want you to put out the thing, okay? So there are downsides to AI. We did have a conversation in our group the other day. I was looking at a conversation that people were having about AI and someone was saying that they they felt like it was cheating. And I totally understand that. And I want to talk about it for a second. So the way I look at this is that this is a tool like many other tools and we are taking progress. You know, progress is coming really, really fast at us. And there have been a lot of times in history that people have said like, ooh, I don't want to use XYZ because it just, it doesn't feel right. We're, we're getting used to it, right? So one of the major issues with AI that is very controversial is sometimes students use it in ways that are not ethical. So they have a lot of problems now with students using it to generate papers. In fact, this actually happened in my daughter's high school the other day. There was someone in one of their classes that got busted for using chat GPT to write a paper. I would like to be extremely clear that there are ethical issues with some of these tools. However, I think it's about how you are using the tool and what you are using it for. 
the way I am advocating using it as thought starters or the canvas that I'm painting on in our business works for me. To me, this is no different than heading over to Pinterest. A lot of times people will be like, I don't really know what to talk about. I'll be like, hey, go on Pinterest, get some ideas. It's looking for ideas on Pinterest. It's looking for inspiration anywhere else. We get these thought starters from places. One discussion in our group was also about someone wanting to feel that what they're reading is, is really them and really authentic. And I completely understand that feeling. And you want people to know and trust that, you know, they're reading about something that you have generated and it's about something that you is personal to you. So that's why I also recommend use it as that base layer, as that foundation, and then add your own flavor and your own tone and your own personality. And so it really does look and feel authentic. All of us have to do what feels good to us. And if if you're listening to this and going, oof, I don't, I just, I can't do it. I can't, you don't have to. But for those of you who are listening and going, oh my gosh, this could really transform the way that I think about a blog. Like I, I have never wanted to do it, but now I feel like I can, it can get me over that hump. I would really encourage you to check it out. There are so many tools out there. And for me, if I can save myself time and energy to concentrate on other more important things and more high value things, I'm going to use it. And I really want to make sure that I am putting something out versus having analysis paralysis or never doing it or seeing it as so overwhelming that I can't get it done. To me, that's why it's a tool to utilize. The other way I want you to think about AI is it's not just for blog posts. That's what we've talked about the most. And that's the main one I want you to think about it for because that's what most people come to me and have the biggest block on. Thinking about other things that you have to write. There might be copy on your website. You might want to revamp the copy on your website. It can give you ideas for social media. Obviously, I've been beating this drum for the last few weeks. Social media is not going to save your business. You do not have to spend your entire life working on it. But I do advocate what I call the proof of life strategy, which is I do want to post occasionally so people know that I'm out there and so that I have a full grid and people get a sense of what my personality is and and what I like. AI can be used to generate ideas for you for your social media. It can generate captions. It can do a lot of things for you that make your social media generation for that proof of life strategy a lot easier. One of the things you'll see if you click on the post that I'm putting in the show notes about the output of the AI, I decided to ask it for 10 great quotes about decluttering. You can then take those quotes on decluttering and you can make that into a graphic. Boom, you have your social media done for the week. Taking this great quotes about organizing, maybe that gives you not only a social media post, but it gives you an idea about a blog post and then you can just use that as a thought starter. You can also use these tools to do other things. So an example, when I talk about show notes, I don't know if you guys have even ever seen them, but if you scroll down on whatever podcast app you're listening to this on, there is a set of notes for every show. And sometimes what I like to do is give a little synopsis of it. So so the other thing you can do is you can take something that you've written and have chat GPT summarize it. As an example, I do a transcript for every one of our podcasts. I can copy that transcript into chat GPT and then it generates a summary for me of what I talked about. So instead of me having to go through thousands of words and then say, oh, I talked about this, 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 and this, chat GPT can do it for me in like five seconds. <laughs> It can also edit things for you. So if you are not a writer, let's say you're looking at copywriting on your website and you can have these tools edit what you have written. So that's especially in Magic Write, which is in Canva. But you can have it edit and make sure it's correct grammar and spelling and punctuation and all that kind of stuff. There are just so, so, so many ways that you can use these tools. I don't want you to think of it as, oh, it only generates blog posts. It can do so many other things. Okay, what I would love for you to do is just think about how this new tool could possibly help you in your business. And the best way to do that is to go and just try them out. I want you to go play around with them. It's actually really, really fun. It can get a little bit addictive. Like it's just, ooh, this is what I'm gonna tell it to do and I'm gonna see what it says. For this episode, all the examples I used via Canva in their Magic Write feature. So please go get Canva if you don't have it. I assume that Canva, I assume Magic Write is only in Pro. I don't know that for a fact, but I, I'm guessing. So the way that you find it is you create a new document, just press the plus sign. You have to click document. So like the other day, I was like, oh, I'm gonna go make an Instagram post and I'm gonna see what Magic Write does. Nope, it doesn't do it. It only does it in a doc. You just click the plus button and then Magic Write will be the first thing that comes up and you just type in your prompt and you're ready to go. 
I also personally use ChatGPT. You get that by going to a website that is called openai.com. I did read something recently that there is a scam going around of people giving shortcuts to get to ChatGPT, and it's actually like scam. It's malware and that kind of stuff. Please just go to openai.com, and then there's an OpenAI app you can use. That is the only way to access ChatGPT. Jasper is another option. I have not personally used it, but I do know some organizers who have used it and other people who say it's really great. There is an organizer in our Inspired Organizer group who says she uses Jasper to write her Google ads, which is another awesome suggestion. We have a lot of people in our group that have been playing around with it. So they'll just put in different prompts, try different things, and then see what changes when you give it a different level of detail. Just play around with it. Like you're sitting on your couch watching TV, just grab your laptop, play around with it, see what you can do. And if you guys have any questions about this, or if you want to talk about the implications of it in terms of, you know, not only some of the good things, but maybe some of the controversial things about it, please reach out to me. You know, I love talking to people. Hello at ProOrganizerStudio.com always happy to have a conversation about it. And I absolutely love to get different perspectives. Can't wait to hear from you. All right. I hope this helps. I hope you have a great day, organizers. Before I go, I do want to remind you too, if you have not gone to watch our free workshop, you can spend another hour with me at the Pro Organizers Profit Plan, where I talk about a lot of organizing related things. I'd love to see you at that workshop. It's available 24 seven on demand. Go to poroadmap.com and it will take you there. I hope you guys have an absolutely awesome week and I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much for listening in to the Pro Organizer Studio podcast. If you'd like to get our roadmap for success as a pro organizer, head straight to www.poroadmap.com.